Let me quickly start. Um, the idea was also together with Daniel Wingen, who is uh, one of the organizers of this conference, to uh, analyze uh, the way uh, Bitcoin con consumes energy. We already know that Bitcoin is not that bad uh, as people say. So uh, we all know already know that that uh, consumption is partly done by sustainability uh, energies. That's basically uh, um, yeah, sustainable energies, uh, wind energy, and so on. And uh, the idea now is that uh, we want to go much more into detail here what happens in case of the hash rate is changing and so on. That's basically the goal, the goal of this research. And therefore, let me quickly jump into these uh, slides for a couple of minutes, and then we, I think it's best to discuss them in more detail. So we have also formulated this article here. Uh, we called it the Green Bitcoin Theory, how our Bitcoin electricity consumption and especially green energy are related. Um, well, my, my name is Philipp Sandner. I myself I am head of the Frankfurt School Blockchain Center um, in Germany. Uh, we have the blockchain center three and a half years ago, and we focus on everything related to blockchain and finance. That's Bitcoin, yes, but that's also Ethereum. And that's also, for example, uh, digital currencies, uh, also including the euro, for example, on Ledger. Um, especially in Germany, the top of digital euro on Ledger pops up more and more these days. But uh, that's not the topic for today. So I will. I think I do not need to show the, uh, the introductory slide. I think this is very, very much that is a very nice nice slide uh, for introduction. The ways um, where is Bitcoin in comparison to other assets? And here you see, for example, Bitcoin having a market capitalization of 190 billion. That was last year, and uh, stock markets being 75 trillion. That was also last year, and gold being 8 trillion last year. That's now being 9 trillion. And here the interesting thing is. The question uh, where to compare Bitcoin with, I think we all know that a very good comparison might be gold. And then you can now do the math and you divide 187 by 8 trillion. And then you end up by a share of 1.5% of Bitcoin's capitalization in comparison to gold. I think that's that's the comparison that matters. And the question is 5% of is it? fair? Is it too low? Is it too high? And so on. But uh, I think it makes much more sense to compare Bitcoin to uh, gold as a commodity, but I think this is known by everybody. Um, I will jump over this. That's basically related, but um, now we are going into the core of the topic. So I think everybody in the room knows uh, the basics of mining. Mining has a very long-term weaker effect uh, on the Bitcoin price. That's also in comparison to the stock to flow theory. I think this is pretty clear to everybody. And then Bitcoin has a very strong short-term effect on mining. So in case the Bitcoin price is changing or in, term, in, in times where we have mining, then uh, the mining intensity, the mining volume um, quickly changes overnight. And the question is always how these uh, circles are changing over time, because you have this short-term effect uh, from right to left and the long-term effect from left uh, to right. So this is now the introduction to our uh, theory, which we are outlining. And here you see uh, that, of course, the architecture of the Bitcoin network is basically embodied in the Bitcoin code. This then allows Bitcoin mining, mining companies to operate. The mining hardware consumes electricity. I think this is trivial. And uh, this is uh, to, to mention some figures here. In January, it has been 10,000 nodes and uh, 116 quintillions of hashes per second. This leads to a very high energy consumption, which is basically not good. I think that's the uh, media narrative we all know. But the question, and now I think it gets interesting, is more or less the question, uh, which en energy is actually consumed, what is motivating mining companies actually to operate, and what energy sources are allowed, allowing low cost of electricity, because now you can connect the dots, and this means 73% uh, of energy is coming from renewables, according to this uh, study mentioned here. Then mining companies only continue to operate if there is access to low cost electricity, and the question is, which energy sources are providing access to so, uh, low cost energy? And here you see uh, it's mainly hydropower, power, wind power, which which allows um, an electricity price of two to three euro cent per kilowatt hour, whereas um, with secondary 
priority. You can also, of course, have coal and gas power plants, which are producing electricity with five to six euro cent kilowatt hours. One of the authors of this study has been Andreas Straub. He's also from Germany. He works at an energy utilities company for years and investigates mining also on behalf of uh, the um, energy utilities company and the figures and the electricity know-how is also coming from him so we really validated what's what's going on here and if you connect the dots then you see here that in case mining companies uh, aim for low-cost energies then they at some point of time have to choose uh, for example hydropower wind energy because only these energy sources are providing a low cost electricity price of two to three euro cent per kilowatt hour and this then leads to this share of 33 73 percent uh, of renewables with the, now our hypothesis that it will be increasing and now i think we are going into the detail and i think now it's it's getting really interesting so what you see here is that you have on the x-axis the eff efficiency of mining companies so this means you have low efficient mining companies on the right hand side that's basically those mining companies operating with old hardware they have access just to high cost electricity that's for example conventional energy sources such as golden cars and on the left hand side you have mining companies which are highly efficient that they have the la latest generation mining hardware in place they have access to low cost electricity and uh, they have uh, for example access to excess energy uh, which is not needed in the electricity grid or renewables. So what we see here, and this is very important, is that we have some kind of distribution here concerning the efficiency grade of mining companies. Some of them are very efficient, they are left. Some of them are not so much efficient, they are on the right hand side. And of course, the lion's share of the mining companies, uh, due to statistical reasons, somewhere in the middle, having this kind of bell curved uh, curve, uh, curve. And this is then reflecting the population of all mining companies having different efficiency profiles. And interestingly, because uh, production of Bitcoin only requires or mainly pro, uh, requires electricity and hardware, we can also mention that here that on the excesses, excess, the efficiency being depicted here, it's also the production price of one Bitcoin. So ideally, in a, in, in a theoretical environment, um, we see that um, that the efficiency is strongly related to the production price of the Bitcoin. This means of one Bitcoin that those companies which are operating at a high efficiency, they are on the left-hand side, they should then be having a more, a higher margin, profit margin when they produce Bitcoin in comparison to those uh, mining companies which are have a low, very low efficiency. That's exactly the same like a gold mine. On the x-axis, you would depict the gold price and then you have low efficient gold mines and you have high efficient gold mines. And of course, those um, gold mines which are highly efficient they have a higher profit margin such that for them it's more fun to operate so now let's see that the bitcoin price is uh, nine thousand us dollar that's basically here and what happens now is that the mining company sitting here on this bell-shaped curve in with this blue dot um, you can now see that this mining company is the profit margin per bitcoin for example um 850 8,500 US dollar is basically the cost for this mining company when they produce one Bitcoin. So the profit margin is 500 US dollar, for example. That's, that's just some numbers here, but it, it, it does make sense. So this mining company will continue to operate mining because for this company, it's fun because they are having, of course, a profit. For this mining company on the left hand side, it's even more fun to operate because they have a very, very high efficiency profile. So for them, the profit margin is much, much, much higher. So now what happens if the Bitcoin price, for example, is decreasing or alternatively, it's the same mechanism if uh, Bitcoin halving occurs, then for example, or but let's stick with the example that the Bitcoin price is decreasing to 8,500 US dollars, then suddenly this mining company, which is sitting here, has a higher production cost for producing the Bitcoin. So it's operating at a loss. So there is a loss for each Bitcoin being produced. The Bitcoin is produced at say 8,600 US dollar. Um, it's, it can sell it for 8,500. So there is a loss. So this mining company at some point of time will stop operating because why should it produce Bitcoin at a higher price than it could sell it on the market? Whereas this mining company on the left hand side, it still operates because it's more efficient. So the profit margin is still there. And therefore this company on the left hand side uh, uh, um, uh, continues to operate. But what you sh should keep in mind here is that uh, once 
the Bitcoin price decreases or once that's more important, Bitcoin mining, uh, Bitcoin halfening occurs, then those mining companies are driven out of business, which are on the right hand side. That's those companies who are running on old mining hardware. That's those uh, companies who are having access to high cost electricity or who have access to conventional energy sources such as gold and gas. They are just less efficient and therefore a lower Bitcoin price or um, a lower block reward appearing after um, halvening will lead to the fact that they will simply be driven out of business. But those mining companies, which are more highly efficient on the left hand side, they will stay in the business because they have a better efficiency profile, which is rooted in the latest generation mining hardware, low cost electricity and so on. I think this study uh, can be known by some of the listeners. Um, you see here that in total, uh, the share of uh, renewables which are used for mining is uh, 73%. That's basically uh, sitting here on the lowest line on the um, second uh, column from the right hand side. Um, that's basically a very, very inter interesting study where they analyzed how much energy uh, is used for mining and also which energy resources are used uh, such that the Bitcoin mining network can operate. So you have here an aggregate uh, total of 73% of the entire network, which is running on renewable energies for mining, according to their studies, of course, which can be disputed, but that's at least like the starting point from our uh, further argumentation now. So 73% of the energy which is being consumed is not coming from coal and gas, but rather from renewables. And now there's coming the final uh, logic here of uh, our paper, which is a theory. It's not proven, it's not empirically analyzed, but it's a theory which can then be analyzed ex post after time has passed. So you see this value chain here. You have engineering companies on the left hand side. They are producing um, equipment um, such that electricity can actually be serviced uh, to those who want to consume electricity. Then you see the energy suppliers, that's basically the utilities companies, uh, they are operating power plants and they are servicing the kilowatt hour, the electricity, for example, to Bitcoin mining companies here more on the right hand side and the Bitcoin mining companies, of course, they are jointly operating the Bitcoin network. But that's basically the value chain which uh, can be observed here. And now that's uh, that's basically the core of our theory. You have now the Bitcoin network where the hash power is increasing. So the hash power is increasing uh, because new entrants are coming into the mining business because uh, mining um, hardware is being improved or because halfening uh, is being taken place. That's basically not increasing the hash power, but it's basically reducing the block reward and it has the same effect. Uh, we could just uh, change the words here. Um, so the the required efficiency to continue mining uh, needs to be improved here. So in case the hash power is increased because we have new entrants or because, because the mining hardware is improved, then the profitability of the Bitcoin mining companies goes down. So you have competitive pressure on mining companies because the hash power is increasing. This leads to the fact that you have two strategies here on behalf of the Bitcoin mining company. The mining company can either choose to invest. This means they are purchasing new hardware. They are purchasing cheaper electricity because they are then doing investment in um, more in better energy resources, which are having a better efficiency profile or Alternatively, that's on the lower half here, they will uh, decide to stop operations. This is, of course, also a valid business uh, strategy. So once again, you have hash power increasing. You have then second profit profitability decreasing because of competitive pressure. Then you have the investment increasing by the companies because a company operating in mining seeks to get access to lower cost energy or it invests into a better hardware to leverage the energy in a more efficient way. That's the, the upper argument or the lower argument is that uh, a company, in case it does not want to invest, simply stops operating and goes out of the Bitcoin network. But this higher investment uh, then leads energy suppliers to increase their R&D spendings um, because um, uh, an energy supplier would then have an incentive to produce high, uh, lower cost energy. They are increasing the access to low cost energy. They are starting to utilizing renewables. They are starting to utilizing depreciated power plants. They are starting to improving their equipment because then you invest in R&D to increase the efficiency of energy production that's happening at the stage of the uh, energy suppliers. And then 
you see this now just with one small error in comparison to three on the right hand side you also see uh, or you also should observe a smaller effect on behalf of the en en engineering companies which also should invest a little bit more in r d because they now have an incentive to improve cooling generators turbines and energy producing facilities and other equipment so because the Bitcoin network increases the hash power downstream, you have upstream and higher R&D activity on the level of energy suppliers and engineering companies. That's the theory that we are having and we are still quite much convinced um, that it should work like this. But of course, this uh, needs to be empirically checked um, in the future. But you see here, and that's basically then uh, the key message here, that the Bitcoin network uh, at some point of time, uh, in case uh, hash rate is increasing, in case its importance is increasing, should have a positive impact on R&D spendings uh, at these two stages of the value chain on the left-hand side. And uh, But we also did some, we are back on the envelope estimations and we already know that this is not occurring right, right now, but it might occur once the Bitcoin market cap is increasing such that basically the, the levers uh, which are being in place here, like the, the volume of R&D spending and so on, that they will then show larger figures. So as I said, it's just an, uh, it's not proven yet, it's just a theory, but ultimately this, uh, this movement of uh, an increased hash rate towards higher R&D spendings could lead to the fact that uh, money is being spent uh, for a higher efficiency electricity. Um, uh, equipment or utilities plus, and that's more important, the entire um, the entire uh, mechanism of uh, efficiency profiles of mining companies should lead uh, to at some point of time uh, to the fact that more mining companies are driven out of the market who are relying on conventional energies, and the share of those mining companies operating with high efficiency with sustainable energy resources should increase. 